Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine. And this week I'm going to be working on the weeding system. So, getting straight into it, first up I've just been roughly planning out all of the ideas that I have for the weeding system. And the basics are really simple, over time weeds are going to appear in your soil, if you don't do anything about it that's going to have negative effects on your plants and so there are going to be some tools which you'll be able to use to remove the weeds and do some weeding. So if we have a look in Trello I've just been planning out the steps that I need to take in order to implement the weeds and as usual I'm going to be starting off with the rendering so that we have something to look at. So I've just been setting up an instance rendering system which is what I'm going to use to render the weeds. Uh, instance rendering, just a very efficient way of rendering the same mesh multiple times and that's going to work fine here because all the weeds are going to use the same mesh I think and I've just been testing it here. These don't look much like weeds though, obviously, look a bit like red squares to be honest. So my next task is to create a nice model for the weeds. So I created a very simple textured model for the weeds and got them loaded up into the game, which actually took quite a while because Unless I'm mistaken, I think it's the first time since uh, about 2015 that I've used a textured model in a game. Uh, so I had to program a new model loader for that to load up the textured mesh data. Um, but it's all working now, and it, it is the only model in the game right now that has a texture. So it looks a little bit out of place, but once I've done the graphical updates, which I'm always talking about, all of the models in the game are going to have textures. So. Don't worry too much, as always, don't worry too much about how things look at the moment. Next up, I've been programming the weed component. Um, any terrain tile that supports weed growth is going to have this, and this just allows weeds to be added to that specific tile, keeps uh, all of the weeds in that tile updated, and it also allows all of the weeds in that tile to be cleared. So I can demonstrate that to you in the game here. You can see that weeds can now be added to a specific tile, obviously I'm doing this manually at the moment, but the weeds would be automatically popping up, and then I can also clear the weeds from any given tile. So I've just been setting up the life cycles for the weeds, so if I go ahead and dig a new bed here, you'll see that after some time, some weeds start to appear, and obviously it won't actually happen this fast, um, but they'll keep appearing until they've reached a kind of maximum weed density, and then of course I can go ahead and remove some of them, but after some time, they'll start popping up again. Next up, I wanted to make it look like the weeds are actually growing, so I've just added this simple calculation here to control the size of the weeds. So if I go ahead and create a new bed here, you'll see that the weeds start off very small, and then over time they slowly grow. To finish off the day, just been doing various little tasks. Firstly, I took all of the settings for the weeds out of the code and put them into a text file, so if I ever want to edit the settings for the weeds, uh, or if I want to add new species of weeds, I can do that without having to change any of the code. Um, also, I have just sorted out the serialization for the weeds, so if I close the game and then launch it again, you can see that all the information about the weeds was correctly saved. Morning everyone, it's 9 o'clock, just about to get started for the day, and my plan for the morning is I'm going to be creating some of the tools that you're going to use to do the weeding. So I made the models for two of the tools that you're going to be able to use to remove weeds from your garden and uh, I got them loaded up in the game. You can see them here in the inventory. I can equip them at the moment, um, but 
they don't do anything. So next, I need to program their functionality. So I've just finished implementing the weeding functionality, which both of these tools do, uh, but the small fork only does one tile at a time, while the hoe does a two by two area. So I'll just demonstrate the fork here. Um, as you can see, I just click on a tile and that removes the weeds from that tile. But if I want to be a bit more efficient, then I can splash out on a hoe and that then allows me to get through these weeds a bit faster. The whole point of the weeds is that they have a negative effect on your usual vegetables that you want to grow and that's why you would want to remove the weeds. So I've just been implementing that, I've just been implementing a health factor which depends on how many weeds are around and given that to the plants. So if we have a look in this bed here, there are a few weeds but it's not too bad and if I click on this turnip you can see that it's not really affected by the weeds at all. But if we go over to this bed here, which is a bit of a disaster, it's completely overrun with weeds, and you can see that this turnip is not happy with the weed situation at all, and it's actually having quite a significant effect on the turnip's health and causing its health to drop quite rapidly. Just taking a bit of a break from the digital gardening to do some real life gardening on my balcony which is currently in a bit of a mess. Um, that's because I'm in the process of planting out a lot of stuff onto the balcony. I've got some strawberries, courgettes, coriander, parsley and beans that all need to be planted and I'm going to get some of that done now. You might remember from the last devlog video that adding compost to a tile can add modifiers to that tile, like buffs and debuffs, and I've just created a new modifier which is the weed growth modifier. Um, so you can see this compost in the shop actually decreases the speed at which weeds grow, and I can demonstrate that here, so if I just remove all of the weeds here quickly, you'll see that on the right side of the bed where there isn't any compost, the weeds will grow a lot faster than on the left side where I've placed that compost. and that helps to, to uh, suppress the growth of the weeds. And this can go both ways. Uh, I could also add this uh, modifier as like a negative side effect of a compost. So for example, this compost in the shop actually increases the speed at which weeds grow. And so in this case, the player would have to decide whether the extra weeding is worth it uh, in order to get those other benefits from the compost. Today the plan is to add some new species of weeds to the game, so uh, the weed that I've been showing you so far, that's going to be the standard weed, that's always going to be coming back, growing back in your garden, but occasionally a more aggressive type of weed might appear and start spreading over your farm, and when that happens the player is going to want to do everything they can to quickly remove that weed before it spreads too far. So that's what I'm going to be implementing today. <laughs> Just been adding support for other species of weeds into the game. So in this bed here, all that's growing at the moment is the standard weed. So I'm just going to manually infect some of these tiles here with the new special weed species. And um, as I said, this species of weed is not going to appear very often. It's going to be pretty rare. But when it does appear, it's going to grow faster than the normal weeds and it's going to be more damaging to your plants. So when you do find it, you're going to want to try and eradicate it from your garden as soon as you possibly can. One of the things that's going to make these aggressive weed species so problematic is that they can spread kind of like a, an infection and that's what I've just been implementing here. So I've just infected the top right corner, the top right tile of this bed with that red aggressive weed species and you can see it's already starting to spread throughout the whole bed. Um, obviously it's spreading way way faster than it actually would um, but the point is that if you're not careful if you don't you know, sort this out straight away and try removing the weeds they might end up taking over your entire bed and your plants will not like that. Next up I've been working on how you can get rid of the aggressive weeds from your garden and the way that it's going to work is that every time you do some weeding there's a chance that the weed will be completely removed from that tile um, so it's like you're actually removing the infection from the tile. So you can see I've just uh, weeded this whole bed here 
and for most of the tiles the weed hasn't come back uh, the weeds have been completely removed in those tiles it's only a few tiles where uh, the weed that aggressive weed has sprouted again um, so obviously if I'm consistent with the weeding I would eventually be able to completely eradicate this weed species from my garden also I made it so that some tools are better at removing the weed completely than others say for example the fork here has a 25% higher chance of completely killing the weed um, and by the way this is only for the aggressive weed species all of those normal green weeds they're just going to come back like normal just been playing around with a few more ideas for what I could what more I could do with this weeding system I just created a weed killer item that I thought I'd try out um, I was thinking that perhaps if you're stuck with a particular bad species bad aggressive weed species that you can't get rid of or you've let it spread too far um, then you might have to resort to using weed killer to get rid of it and that will get the job done but uh, it will probably have some negative effects I haven't implemented anything yet but I was thinking it could um, have negative effects on nearby plants or negatively affect the soil in the long term I don't know there's loads of possibilities lots to think about um, but right now I'm gonna get outside into the Sun and go for a walk with Rufus So the final piece of this aggressive weed puzzle is where did they come from in the first place? How does your garden get in infected by one of these aggressive weed species? And I've been thinking of a couple of ways that it could happen. Firstly, perhaps it could just be a random event. Just by random chance one of your soil tiles could get infected. Um, that would be something that would happen very rarely. Or the other way that I've just implemented is that it could be uh, another negative side effect of certain composts. So perhaps if you can't afford the good compost, you'll have to risk taking the cheap compost, which has the chance of introducing one of these invasive weed species into your garden. And obviously I've increased the chance here just for the sake of demonstration so that we can actually see it happening. But as you can see, I've just been placing compost over this bed here and oh no, we've accidentally introduced a new weed species into our garden. Shouldn't have used the cheap compost. Hopefully it won't spread. Oh no, it's spread everywhere. Quick, someone get the weed killer. So I think that's going to be it for this first iteration of the weed update. I just wanted to say again that all of the speeds that the weeds are growing and spreading and all of that is obviously going to be way way slower in the actual game. This is after all meant to be a casual farming game. I don't want the weeds to be overwhelming the player. Um, so I will be spending time doing a lot of balancing to make sure that the settings for the weeds are all appropriate. Also, as I said, this is just the first iteration of the weeding feature. So if you have any suggestions or feedback, then do let me know and I'll consider it next time when I revisit this feature. Before I finish this video, I just want to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were TRC Terracoin, Seven Sign Bits, Albert Gutierrez, George Fedorov, Alan Lance, Yuri Kranovic, Josiah Hillman, Busfara Walter, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, John Needham, Christopher Poe, Adam Farkas, Mario Martins, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connaughton, Thomas Johnson, Leandro Di Pietro, Miggy Doze, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, Kathleen Coder, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.